So now that we have the origination down, let's see where the vertebral arteries actually end up going. And uh, I would also recommend that at this time you open the stroke lesion page so you can refer to the different arteries and their lesions while we talk about them here. Okay, so let's start. So the vertebral arteries, they ascend it upwards into the skull, and this is a really distorted picture that I've drawn here, but bear with me. Um, this is the occipital lobe, this is the cerebellum, this is the medulla, the pons, the midbrain, the temporal lobe, and the frontal lobes. So you know this, but you can see here that the vertebral arteries, they have entered the skull, and then when they enter the medulla, here is where they give out their first branch which is known as the pica or the posterior inferior cerebellar artery now the pica is exiting the lateral medulla and entering the inferior part of the cerebellum i mean in this diagram so a lesion in pica should affect the lateral medulla and the inferior cerebellar peduncle great so we have the area down now as these arteries move upwards, they give rise to another artery known as the ASA, medially, in the middle here. And this ASA exits the caudal medulla and enters the spinal cord. So we'll talk about the ASA in a bit, but if you see the two vertebral arteries have ascended upwards, and here at the pontine medullary junction, they have both combined together to form the basilar artery. So at the pontine medullary junction, the two vertebral arteries combine together and form the basilar artery. This is also where they give out another tributary known as the ACA, or the anterior inferior cerebellar artery. This ACA is coming out from the lateral sides of the pons and entering the middle and inferior part of the cerebellum in this diagram. So a lesion in ACA should affect the lateral pons and the middle and inferior cerebellar peduncles. Now, if you look at this basilar artery, it's been going upwards in the pons and it's given little pontine arteries right here. And at the junction of the midbrain and the pons is where it gives out its where it gives out its third main cerebellar artery. And this artery is known as the superior cerebellar artery. So you've had the pica, the ica, and the ska, I guess. And these three collectively supply the cerebellum. But there's one more artery that the basilar artery ends up providing, and this is known as the posterior cerebral artery. And as the name implies, cerebral, this affects, I mean, this applies the occipital lobe of the cerebral cortex. And a lesion in the PCA will then obviously lead to defect in the occipital cortex and the visual cortex. And you can see these tiny two little PCOMs coming out of the PCA, and these PCOMs are known as the posterior communicating arteries, and they are responsible for communicating with the anterior circulation. Anyway, so this kind of gives us the whole idea of where the arteries are located, in the sense that what lesions, what areas are affected when there's a lesion in the arteries. For example, PICA affects the lateral medulla and the inferior peduncles, ACA affects the lateral pons and the middle and inferior peduncles. PCA affects the occipital lobe. The basilar obviously affects the pons, the medulla, and a whole lot of things that we will discuss now.